what other better way to practice some drawing than to do some action gesture drawings? Feel free to grab your sketchbook and draw along. What's up everyone, welcome back. It's Jess here, I hope you guys are doing great. In this video and on today's agenda, we are going to talk about gesture drawing and I'll be using watercolors for today. I've gathered a few references to show you guys how I do the whole process and you may have seen this spread that I've posted on my social media on Instagram and I got a ton of messages to try these out and do it in a video. So here we are and I'm really excited to practice some more poses and share some tips. So without further ado, let's get started. Now let's quickly touch upon what gestures are and why it's important to practice them while I gather some supplies. If you even search up gesture drawing up on Google, you'll see that they are a suggestion of the action and it's a very quick drawing that you do just to get the main pose. These are usually a series of drawings that consists of you capturing the main pose that you see in the reference or the model. You can use a medium that really helps you capture the whole pose very quickly. So today I'm going to be using watercolor and some larger brushes so that I refrain from going into too much detail. I'm quickly mixing a little puddle of pigment and paint with water so that I don't have to keep remixing once I begin. Starting with the first reference, I take the paint that I mixed and create one big shape and overall the kind of action that I see happening and I capture it immediately. You're probably wondering why on earth are you doing watercolor and not using a pencil? Well, that's a great question because I actually think watercolor helps me capture the shapes rather than the lines. I'm able to lay down the paint quickly and since it's a water-based media, I'm able to adjust the shapes while the paint is wet. So I will only be using one color and pigment for the process of making the gestures and I want to show you guys how I lay down the first round of basically the line of action like we spoke about and then I take a darker value, I add a little bit more paint to the mixture and start adding the shadows. With watercolor it's all about laying in your lights first and then once that layer is dry you can begin to add your darker values. While doing your gesture drawings, it's really easy to try to focus on the details, but I like to constantly remind myself to just think about big shapes and values that I see. And that's another reason why I love using watercolor for these exercises, because I'm really able to lay down a brush stroke which automatically forms a shape rather than a line. And I really love the loose, cohesive look that it creates once you're done. The first gesture is complete and now let's move on to the next reference. I do want to note that sometimes the first drawing or painting that we make in our sketchbook whenever we're practicing may or may not come out as well as we want it to. And that's okay because we are going to be timing ourselves and I really recommend setting a small timer so you're not getting too caught up on one of the drawings and you keep practicing so that each one of them can be better and get better as you go. You can set your timer for different poses based upon whatever you feel is comfortable for you. For example, I recommend starting out with maybe two minute poses or perhaps one minute poses and then you can actually shorten your time so that you don't allow yourself to get into too much detail. Actually, in art school, we were practicing drawing from the model every single day and the professor actually sometimes timed us like 20 seconds, 10 seconds, and we were like, how are we supposed to finish a drawing in such a short amount of time. But that is actually the exercise that I learned from the most because it doesn't allow you to overthink and you're using your brush to quickly capture or even your pastels to capture the movement and action very quickly. So if you're drawing along today and using your references, I really recommend you set your timer and challenge yourself to create the poses and drawings of the gestures as fast as possible. And once you've tried a few short poses, you can then give yourself a little bit more time in the upcoming drawings so that you can study the figure a little bit more. Now, when I first started off with gesture drawings, they were super difficult and I was very frustrated on the fact that I had to draw this very loosely. But after practicing many and learning the concept of getting in the action, rather than focusing on the details, I was able to learn to stylize my work and see how I can apply the looseness to capturing the figure quickly. And of course, it took some time and practice until the drawings and figures started to look the way I'd like them to. 
All right, two down and many more to go. So I want to talk to you guys about some tips regarding references. The references that I gathered today are from a few websites that provide free, royalty-free images. I really love using Unsplash.com as well as Pixabay. I'll have everything linked below, but I always like to search for some images that have really good action poses or also have some good lighting. I also look for any of these shots not to have any distortion in the figure since we are working from a reference. Ideally, it's always best to work from a live model, so somebody who can maybe pose for you. Perhaps you have a family member at home that you can actually draw. That's actually the best practice and I always preach for that. And in art school, that is how I originally began learning. Of course, you're still practicing when you're drawing from a reference, but sometimes the pictures don't allow you to really see the form in 3D. So if you have a chance to draw from life and maybe perhaps set up a friend or a family member to quickly do some gesture drawings, I highly recommend it. Many masters of the world from previous centuries and even in modern day times set up a model while they're painting and that's how they complete their work. But of course, there's not always access to have a live model sit, so I do recommend the royalty-free websites where you can actually practice from photographs. I'll have some other websites linked below where you can actually have a timed pose, and it's really great for practice. Although I've just practiced the full body of the baseball pose, I decided to practice an up-close version of a younger girl ready to swing the bat. I usually like to do this to do a smaller up-close study because that really helps me see the upper body and uh, I can actually paint larger. So sometimes I just throw a close-up study in there. I love having a variety of gestures and poses to practice from. So if I'm ever scavenging for photos online or references to draw, I'm always thinking about variety and although we can usually gravitate to one kind of reference and one topic to draw, I like to actually choose references that I wouldn't normally pick so that way I'm challenging myself and of course including some diverse variety in my sketchbook. So with the other references that I chose that were more action based, more sports based, I decided to take a fashion pose so that I can practice a more static position. And back to some running poses, I chose this reference so that I can actually have the figures drawn quicker and also interacting with another. So as you guys can see, the main point is that I'm constantly looking for ways to challenge myself to try something new. And I also lowered the timer a little bit so that I can capture these even quicker. And I feel like I actually put less detail into this gesture drawing and it's one of my favorites from the spread. By the way, if you're drawing along today and practicing in your sketchbook, I'd love to see what you create with your own gestures, so feel free to tag me on my Instagram page. I absolutely love connecting with you guys and seeing the work that you create. And by the way, if you guys haven't checked out my Patreon yet, I actually have a little art community going where we do some monthly art challenges, so I actually am able to give you guys some more in-depth feedback on there. And I'm definitely able to answer quicker in our private Discord server where all the artists share their work and we can all learn from one another. I'll have all of that linked below in the description as well. So as the sketchbook spread is coming to a full completion, I always take a look at the full composition and wherever I'm kind of missing something, maybe I can add something else. And I decided to fit one more figure in that little space. I always think about composition no matter what I'm doing, if I'm practicing, I always think about how I can make the composition strong and how I can position the subject on the paper where everything looks balanced. And of course there comes to a point where you must come to a finish and seeing all the figures laid out on the paper is super satisfying. I felt like it's been a while since I've practiced these, so I was really happy that I can share the process with you guys along with some tips. So I hope you found it helpful. I did my best to keep these as loose as possible and create a nice flow with all of the watercolors, but my main motive and intention was to capture the action that I was seeing. 
So when you're practicing and when you're drawing, I really hope that it motivates you to really focus in on the main shapes that you see. Don't forget to stay loose and really focus on that line of action. And remember to challenge yourself with quick poses so that you stay on task and get as many done as possible. Gesture drawings are challenging at first, but are super great to improve your skills. Let me know in the comments below which one of these you like the most. I definitely feel like practicing these on two spreads helped me get a little groove going and was a great challenge. And also, of course, a great way to fill my sketchbook. In this previous spread, I definitely played around with size and here I also played around with a bit more action poses. But overall, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and if you were drawing along, I really hope that you enjoyed it as well. All the mentioned information will be in the description below, so don't forget to check it out. You can also check out my website and stay tuned for a new shop update. And most importantly, stay creative, stay motivated, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!